Hey everyone, Niels here from Dingy Studio. Today I'm starting a new video series of relatively short how-to videos showing you how to use Sanity Studio. We use Sanity, the headless content management platform, in many customer projects and also on our own website. And I get a lot of frequently asked questions. So maybe let's view this video series as our video version of an FAQ. And today I want to give you a rough overview of what is Sanity Studio, where do you do what, how does it, what's the basic concept behind it. Maybe this is an interesting video for people who are used to working with WordPress, for example. Like that's a very popular platform and we have many customers upgrading from WordPress to a bigger web property website based on Sanity. So I'm just going to show you around the studio a little bit and expect a lot more videos in this series. All right, let's dive right in. So I'm showing you here the Sanity instance that we are using for our own website of our Dingy Studio website. So like, I'm gonna show you Dingy Studio. This is the website. All of the content that you see here is being pulled out of Sanity. And you as the content editor, so I wanna make clear, these videos are for the users of Sanity Studio and not for developers. There's, there's a lot of content out there for developers, but there's not a lot of content out there for you editing the content on this platform. So let's take a look. When you log onto, onto Sanity, the first thing is probably something similar to this. Like there's a big white area here. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of stuff on the left. The bunch of stuff on the left, first thing to address, the UI looks similar-ish on most of the instances that you're going to see. There might be customizations going on. So this can be tweaked a little bit with the custom logo up here or with different colors or stuff like that. But so generally, you're going to find a list of stuff on the left. And this list of stuff on the left, this may look different. <laughs> this will definitely look different from project to project. So in our case, um, and that is maybe something to understand with Sanity right from the get-go, Sanity is highly customizable. I would even go th this far to say you don't actually go anywhere without customizing Sanity. So there's nothing really that you get default out of the gate when you start working with Sanity. And then you start to add this in. And the studio is like this common way to present it. But there's always the block functionality. You can always add pages. Stuff like that is just available from the get-go. Sanity is much more custom. Let's look at our homepage, for example. If you click on it, we see that the white area has been filled with content. <laughs> and so the fields that you see here now, like this is the title of the page, this is the type of the page, homepage, homepage. You notice that there's an editor tab and there's a preview tab over here. We're gonna get into the preview tab later. There's a couple icons over here. So there's latest version, interesting, uh -huh, okay, cool, cool. All of the stuff we're gonna get into in this series, don't worry, but the basic concept is that we have this set of fields here, dinghies, USPs, headline items. You can already gauge that these are probably very custom to our Dinghy Studio homepage. And that is exactly the case. So a developer from our team has decided that this is the way that they want the content to be structured and to be managed. And so all of these bits of information will be used in the homepage. Now we have structured our studio in a way that all of the pages that will always be there, so we'll always have a homepage, we'll always have a projects page, we'll always have an about page. All of these are, so to say, hard coded. Like I can't, if I really wanted to in the UI, I cannot delete the about page. Like this is not something that I can rename. I can't even change the URL of it. Like that it's slash about that is just fixed in the website. But there are other pages where the site menu looks a little bit differently. For example, if we switch over to blog posts. Now this is something that you can already draw like a, a parallel to WordPress, for example. So as you can see, and this is even 
the more standard behavior in Sanity Studio, that if you select something on the very left side here in the side panel, that it will probably open in something similar like this. And now Sanity does call this a document list. So this document list holds a whole bunch of documents of the same type. In this case, this is a blog post. So similar to the home page, a blog post is not always structured the same way. In fact, same as with the home page, you get to decide as the developer of this website which fields are going to be included in this document type. And so we're going to go into more detail in the following videos, but you can already see there's a lot less fields on this document than there were on the home page. There's a lot more stuff going on. And so that must have some sort of meaning. So blog posts, we get the document list collection, and now we can get into one blog post. And again, you get this area over onto the side. You also get the preview button, and you see that it has been published three days ago, Jan 14th. There's the grade out publish button and there's the document actions. The document actions is also something that I'm going to get into more deliberately in one of the following videos. Now, one of the last things that I want to show you in this video today, which is just the rough first overview over um, Sanity Studio, is the search function, because I think it's very underrated. At least I don't see lots of our customers using it. You can get there even with a shortcut. You can press Command and on Windows, I believe it's Control and then K. That will pull up the search function. And now I can search for anything that I want. So let's search for user experience as a topic that we um, that we care about a lot at Dingy Studio. And now we can see that it gets us results from every different document type that we have in our content warehouse. So the document type is noted on the right side. This is a tag. This is a glossary entry icon, area of expertise, a project. We have the keyword user experience in many of the different document types. If I wanted to, so first of all, like now you can just click here and it will jump into the collection to the document that you had found in the search. That's super useful, totally. But you can also, and I think that is very interesting, filter by the document types. So as you can see, we have a ton of document types going on here. And let's say I'm just looking for a blog post about user experience. Then I can just filter the document type and only get blog posts with that keyword included somewhere and I get a preview that says this is the title of the document, there's a little preview image, when was it last updated and who created this document. So this is the search function and then last thing I'm going to show you is there's a little button for help and resources over here. There's a little button that says who is here. So also a topic that I want to get into more detail in a future video, but generally you can just note this down <laughs> and, and remember this forever. On this document, for example, I see that there are unpublished changes. So there's a little orange dot in the list. The same applies to strategy or conversion. Doesn't apply to research, so that does not have unpublished changes, but this one has. And as you can see, a difference is that the published button is grayed out here because there's nothing to publish. And here, the publish button is active. So I could just press this now. This was published. I get a green box published just now and the orange dot is removed. But why I'm telling you this in the context of which other users are here. Whenever you work on Sanity Studio, you don't hit, have to hit save. In fact, every keystroke, every change that you make is saved to the database right away and your work progress is always safe. And this even goes that far that in Sanity Studio, you can work with all of your team at the same time. You can even work on the same document. You can even work on the same paragraph if you want to. It just works like 
a Google Doc, for example, or any other live collaboration platform like Miro, for example. All of the changes from everyone working on the same document are always persisted right away. And the publish button is not a save button. It just determines if this document is publicly available or not. With this, this is your account management dropdown, like in many other platforms where you can sign out and where you can see what your username and email address is that you used to sign into the Sanity Studio. And with this, I want to end this first video and thank you for watching. See you on one of the next ones. I'm going to put all of this together in a playlist so it's easily accessible. All right, see you next one.